excellent. We're, uh, it's a beautiful day, isn't it? Really lovely day. And it's quite unusual because I think it's supposed to be sunny tomorrow and it's a bank holiday, which, which never happens. It's normally raining on bank holidays, isn't it? But um, we're going to start our worship because today is the day of Pentecost, isn't it? The day we celebrate Pentecost, the coming of God's Holy Spirit. And we're going to start by watching a little video to bring us some scripture to remind us of those events. This is Acts 2, verses 1 through 12. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues of the Spirit. Había judíos que moraban en el lugar. Había ayuda, amuna, o bembeza, o choquera, con tundur y ose, pasi, patampo. Dice Oswald ten huko. Coma. Protože každý z nich je slyšel mluvit svou vlastní řečí. Yo pat mo que se zi, yo tap gade, yo tap di. Unter uns sind Pater, Meder und Elamiter, Leute aus Mesopotamien und Kappadozien, aus Pontus und aus Asien, Phrygia, Apamphilie, Ägypter, Akraju, Libie, Kyrene, Abschistjehovali, Rimane. We start with a question this morning. What does this mean? What does the Holy Spirit's coming mean, is moving? What does it mean? We're going to be having a, a couple of questions throughout today as we worship together. But just now we're going to start by singing together. We're going to turn to 298 in our songbooks. And we're going to stand and sing, Come thou all-inspiring spirit, into every longing heart, won for us by Jesus' merit, now thy blissful self in part. Let's stand together and sing together.
words of the third verse to us. Next words, Elsie. Yep. Thank you. We're going to sing verse four together. Verse four, Elsie. Cling to. be seated. We come today as well, not just uh, to celebrate Pentecost, but we've chosen today to reflect over the past 12 months because we've been on a journey, haven't we? Yes, we've been on a journey. We've been using NCD. For those of you who might not remember what NCD stands for, it's Natural Church Development. And um, we did surveys this time last year. And do you remember what came out of those surveys? What came out of the surveys? Can you remember? Small groups. Small groups was was one of the areas that we identified that perhaps we weren't as a church meeting as well. And over the past 12 months, we've been thinking about small groups. We've been thinking about the purpose that they serve and this idea of helping develop deeper relationships within our worshiping community. And that can take place in all sorts of ways. And we've been exploring that through preaching and the leadership team has been doing that. And um, so we're gonna be thinking about that. So don't rush off today, because we do have the surveys. Uh, So we we would like you to do a survey. Some of you may have already gotten one through your email and uh, hopefully had a chance to do those. But for those of you who haven't, we have paper copies today. But I want to start by asking you a question, and I want you to find somebody that's sitting close to you, so it doesn't have to be just you and somebody else, it could be you and two other people, but the question today is, what do you value most about being part of Catford Salvation Army? So find somebody and just sit and have a conversation for a minute few minutes about what you value most about Catford Salvation Army.
Okay, so hopefully you've had a chance to, to have a little chat. What kind of things were, were you saying to each other that you valued about Catford Salvation Army? Anybody who's brave enough to speak out loud? What was the question again? It's up on the screen, patience. It's up on the screen. Were you, were you talking about the football, were you? Or <laughs> It's a second home, yeah. Yeah. So, so, yes, a home away from home where you can be yourself, you can share, you trust the people that you're here with. Lovely. Anybody else? You're always pleased when you get, well, we're always pleased when you get, when you walk through the door. We are. To, to be, we'll be honest, at this stage, we're, we're, we're just half grateful you made it here safely. Part, part of it is relief. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Lovely. But everybody looks happy to see you when you come. Yeah, that's very, that's very important as well. Last chance. Anybody else want to share before we sing our next song? They're, they're, we're going to have another discussion in just a moment, but... Yes. Yeah, so the, the worship is important, but actually the community is important as well, isn't it? That, that we share together. Brilliant. And of course, as, as a church, one of, the, one of the parts that we want part of our community here is the Holy Spirit, isn't it? We want, the, we want to be a Holy Spirit community. And we're going to sing our next song. It's in the source, but the words will come up on the screen. Holy Spirit. We welcome you. Move among us with holy fire as we lay aside all earthly desires. Hands reached out and our hearts aspire. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We're going to sing together. The piano is going to lead us. And we'll sing this song of invitation together.
things that, um, that I like about Catford Salvation Army is we always start with a hymn for the people and we get to about the second or third song and all of a sudden the, the hall is much fuller. It's, it's always heartening. It's almost as if people are hearing the praises and coming in. They're being drawn in by our worship that we make together and that encourages me. Now, we have another question for you this morning, and this question asks, what have you learned about what it means to be part of a faith community this year? So what have we learned about what it means to be church, in other words, is what the question is asking this year. So find somebody to talk to and take a few minutes and talk about that together. Doreen, there's people behind you. Oh, you're going to Doreen, okay. Okay, I'm going to call us back then. Are there any things that, that you were discussing in your groups that you're happy to share for the wider congregation? The WhatsApp group. Mm. Yes. Very good. And anybody else? I, now I hear a few people talking. Are you happy to talk to all of us? Because we moved into that phase of things. Okay. 
Okay, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Last chance. Anything? We haven't heard anything from the platform. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything from the platform that. No, he's not. His mobility is not what it used to be. But he's still part of the community because he watches every week. He joins our worship through, through the YouTube videos uh, that go up. And Rebecca and I are able to go and, and visit him and other people. He's always, he's always really glad to hear from any of you. So uh, if you ever get a chance to give him a ring, he'd be more than happy to, to chat and to catch up. Yeah. I think one of the things I've learned about community this year is that we are a we and not a me. Community is about all of us and not just about me. There's a temptation today, we're, we're going to think a little bit about it later, but a temptation today to think that life is always about me, but it's about we. Lovely. Now, um, for those of you, because we have recognized that some of you have joined us along this journey this year, this NCD journey, so some of you might be wondering, well, what is NCD? So I thought it'd be helpful just to have a, a quick video to remind us what natural church development is about, and we're going to watch that now. What defines church health? How can your church grow in quality and quantity? How can you positively build your church no matter your level of responsibility? If you've ever asked any of these questions, then the Natural Church Development Framework can help you make your church a more vibrant, healthy community. Natural Church Development, or NCD, is a practice based on the eight quality characteristics of thriving churches. These qualities are empowering leadership, gift-based ministry, passionate spirituality, effective structures, inspiring worship services, holistic small groups, need-oriented evangelism, and loving relationships. These eight characteristics emerged from the research findings of the most extensive study ever done on church growth. All churches have these characteristics, some stronger, some weaker. For example, the Seventh-day Adventist church as a whole tends to be very strong on need-oriented evangelism, but can struggle in the area of holistic small groups. However, for any church to flourish and to grow, all eight areas are vital. So increasing the quality of each of the eight areas is the key to a healthy church community. To discover the strengths and relative weaknesses of your local church, one central tool is the NCD survey. 
by regularly engaging with the survey process with a sample of your congregation where you survey, assess, implement and survey again, you can find out where you already excel, which characteristic you need to focus on and where your efforts will bear the greatest fruit for your faith community. The NCD framework also highlights the impact of each member on the health of the church. When it comes to church life, there's no distinction between personal development and church development. In fact, if you don't develop or invest in people, you cannot intentionally develop the church. Every individual believer, regardless of their level of formal responsibility, can put the principles of NCD into practice. And each congregation can apply NCD principles to its specific situation in a way that is in line with our Adventist heritage and expresses our specific calling. NCD is a tool. It is not a cure. And like every tool, it can be used well or poorly, but it is an effective framework that underlines the truth that Ellen White expresses, that a healthy church is composed of healthy members. I recommend the NCD tool as one helpful way to assess and improve the health of your local church. As this series on natural church development continues, we'll be exploring the eight characteristics of thriving churches. So join me next time to focus on the quality of empowering leadership. That was produced for one particular church. But it gives us an overview about what NCD is. It reminds us of those eight qualities. And later on, um, after we've, we've worshipped together and celebrated, we've got some surveys that, that we're going to do that will help us rate that. But we've remembered, haven't we, that um, s small groups was one of the things that uh, came up as, as our weakest. And we've explored that, and actually what we found out is that a small group doesn't have to be, when I say a purposeful group or an on-purpose group, actually a small group is the people that we meet with in church, the people we share with in church, the people that we ask for prayer from in our church. So it doesn't always have to be a formal group, but it's that support network within our community, and uh, that's something that we've explored over these past 12 months. But we're going to sing again, and as we sing, we're going to give you a chance to um, give in the offering. And then after that, Sharon's gonna come and share a bit of her journey over the past 12 months. So let's sing together. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my best thought in the day and the night, waking or sleeping, thy presence my light. Let's stand and sing together as we give in the offering.
Father God, we ask that you will bless the offering and use it for the extension of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I'm going to invite Sharon to come. Okay. Um, so, I have had a very interesting year. Well, it's not exactly a year, but it's been very interesting. Um, as you all know, I was um, um, part of the growing leadership team um, course, and I must say, now that it's over, looking back, wow, is what I would say. When I started, I was a bit confused because a lot of things was confusing me about uh, myself in the church and everything. I wasn't sure about a lot of things. Um, and if I say in the church, this is like going back a while, certain things that used to happen to me or people that I used to meet. You know. But when I started the course, I was lucky to have um, Rebecca as my mentor, so I was always able to go back and forth to her and talk to her about how the course was going. But um, there was always something that used to bother me. When I used to hear people talk about God's calling or God's gift, it's things that used to confuse me. Because I remember when I was back home, I'd gone to visit my dad back home. And um, loads of people kept coming in. And my mom would say, wow, we haven't seen some of these people for a very long time. But since you've been here, people have been coming to see you, wow. And um, I remember the last person left. And I thought, OK, now I can relax and you know, go about my business. And then somebody just came in with a car. And I said, oh my god, I'm really tired. Who is this now? And then my dad said to me, Sharon, don't ever say that. You have a gift from God that pulls people together. These people who are coming, it's not like they're coming because they want something from you or whatever. We haven't seen them for ages. But there's something about you that pulls people together. So I never thought much about it until when I started going through certain things. That's when I realized that I had that gift. But I still wasn't sure. You know, I would go into, like, in a bus, for example, and somebody would say, I remember a lady just came in, and um, she just came and sat next to me. I don't know this woman from anywhere. And then she just said to me, can I talk to you? Can I talk to you? And then she started telling me about her life and what she was going through and whatever. She didn't want anything from me. She just wanted me to listen, you know. And then I went home and I think, that's really strange. So those words of my father kept still coming back to say, you always bring people together. But what I realized now is that when people come to me, majority of the times, it's not about happy things. People always come to me, it's either with problems or things like that, but I've I don't really have people coming to me and say, oh my God, I'm coming to share you my good news and this and that. But I always have people who, have, who are going through certain things. you know. So going through this course and speaking to Rebecca and um, she also telling me what she sees about me, I started to now look at things really differently. And when um, I think three days before our graduation, I received a call from a friend's mom. Now this lady, I've been friends with her children for over th nearly 30 years. But she was an, a, a woman who, she normally comes to UK, you know, for holidays and stuff. But I've never really sat with her and spoke about anything like that, you know. But she called me and just said to me, can I talk to you? I need to speak to you about something. She's in Zimbabwe. You know, and I was a bit taken aback because I sp speak to her children every day who are my friends, but they didn't say anything was going on. But she called me and she's, she told me certain things 
that she was going through, and it was to do with her children and, you know, some personal, really personal, deep stuff, you know. And um, she said, I said to her, okay, I've heard you. I'm going to try and talk to your children and, you know, see how we can do things. And she said, yes, because for the past two months, I've been feeling like this and I've been thinking, who is it who I can talk to? And for some reason today, I woke up with your name on my lips. And the last day of this course, when we were about to have our graduation, patients came to me and said something to me that really took me back. And I was in tears because I realized that I've been praying to God for God to show me really what it is that he wants me to do. But it took until the very last day of the course for me to get my confirmation of God telling me, I'm confirming to you that this is your gift. You are a people's person. You will bring people, you, whether they're sick or they are hungry or whatever, that is where I put you. So I have accepted that this is what God wants from me. So I'm really grateful about this course because it opened up things that I think I knew, but now I have a confirmation. So that's my testimony for today. Thank you for sharing, Sharon. And um, this is a course w which I actually um, we're hoping will continue with the change of the division. The indications are that the new division will, will possibly be looking at um, continuing this. Now, don't be put off by the fact it's called Growing Leaders because we've just heard her testimony and the testimony I heard was about how God uses it to help identify within you how God wants to use you. So that does not necessarily mean that you, we're going to expect you to be up here. But it does mean that he can use it to help you see where he is using you where you are. Okay? So if Rebecca and I, in the next few months, come alongside you and say, would you like to go along to Growing Leaders? please consider it. And what I would say is, see it as us wanting to invest in you, because it's not a free course. Our core pays money every year for everybody who goes on it. It's an investment from the church, okay? So if we come to you, it's because we can see that God is doing something there, and uh, we want to invest in you and help you discover more fully how God wants to use you and move in your life. So I'm going to invite Rebecca. She's going to come. I'm going to land up doing a really quick sermon, you know, because I, I was intended to, to finish early, but we're already almost quarter past 11. So uh, I'll invite Rebecca to come and do the Lord's Prayer. Happy Pentecost, everybody. It's a great festival of the church, isn't it, when God poured out his spirit and we celebrate that. And also we pray, come Holy Spirit, every day, don't we, to fill us with himself and with his power. Now we've been learning the Lord's Prayer in sign language. So I'm going to go through what we've already learnt and then we're going to do the next bit. So bear with me, okay? I suppose so. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do give us this day our daily bread today. And then I will quickly explain what we've done so far because not everybody's been here and then we'll put the whole thing together. Is that all right? Not really. <laughs> not really. Not really. Okay. So give us this day our daily bread. Now give us, okay, so I can either give to you or you can give to me. But because the gift today is coming from heaven, give us, okay? And the symbol for us is this. So it's give us. Now the sign for this day is the same as the sign for now. So we just do this, this day, okay? Give us. 
This day, and we do the symbol for hour again, hour, daily, so I'm going to explain daily. When you're talking about time, that's yesterday, that's tomorrow, so we're going to do all the days, we're going to unfurl our hand every day, all the time, give us this day, our, no sorry, what? This day, sorry, I got confused. You've confused me now. Our daily bread. So we've got daily. Bread is very simple. You put your hand out and you pretend you're cutting a loaf. Okay, so I'll just go through it all then. I've got myself in a muddle. I'm sorry about that. Give us this day our daily bread. Okay, I've saved all the forgiveness for next week because that's complicated in sign language as well as in real life. So we're going to need to focus on that. So I'll run through what we've done and then we'll get up to where we are. So this is the symbol for Lord. You make the L shape, Lord's Prayer. Okay, and it is our, and then this is the symbol for Father. It's a symbol for F, so you do two taps, Father. So it's our Father. This is the sign for who. Art is definite, art in heaven. Okay, so we remember that, don't we? Hallowed is a sign for honour. So hallowed be, this is thy. And this is name. You do a little salute. Because this is the sign for N. That's N. So we do a little salute. Okay. Hallowed be thy name. Okay. Am I losing you all? You're losing the will to live. Just keep going. Okay. So it's thy kingdom. Remember the crown and the land. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Then we get to the bit we've done today. Give us this day our daily bread. And that's the prayer for today for Pentecost, isn't it? Because Jesus said, you know, if you ask the Father, how much more will he give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And that's what we ask for him to do today, to give us his Holy Spirit, the thing that sustains our life together. Is that okay? Right. So more next week on the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Now I'm going to invite Eileen to share our Bible reading or one of our Bible readings and uh, ignore what it says up there. She's going to share Hebrews 12, 1 to 4. Hebrews 12, 1 to 4.
I'm going to invite Shirai and he's going to lead us in a time of prayer. Uh, in our prayer focus this morning, we're going to listen to this wonderful song um, by Don Moore. And it's actually quite fitting because um, I didn't know what you guys were planning. It's actually the Lord's Prayer. So, <laughs> so um, can we have the music, please, um, children? <laughs> In Psalm 107, we read, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his love endures forever. To start our prayer this morning, we had this wonderful song. And in the theme of what we are looking at today, to just think about what and give thanks to what the Lord has done for us today. And I was just preparing for this when we were asked to prepare. Um, I was just thinking about myself as well, 
And um, in the past few years, in the quest for spiritual growth, um, I ensured that every time I was driving to work in the morning, I listened to gospel music. And you know, I love traditional army songs and other songs and contemporary songs. Um, this helped me start my day in a very spiritual way, often feeling calm and peace at work. But of course, the pandemic came. That all changed. I only had to walk downstairs into my office. So that routine, I lost that routine. And I really did miss that routine and discipline. And it just reminded me. So when I was just doing some of my daily devotionals, I was reading this devotional. And uh, it talked about how we maintain our cars, um, how we maintain our washing machines, our heating, how we keep everything clean and tidy into the house. Um, to keep ourselves going and to keep our homes and the things that we use going. And it sort of challenged me when I was reading it, and this devotion was challenging us, that how do we maintain our spiritual growth? I thought, how wonderful. Um, so it made me think about that. We do need to have spiritual growth. We do need to do things that gives us that strength and helps us to maintain our spirituality. So this morning, um, I'm just conscious of time, so we just have a few moments of prayer, um, of silent prayer, and then I'll pray, in just thinking and thanking God for what he has done for us. So let's just spend, spend a few seconds just thanking God in silence uh, about what he's done for us over the last year. Dear God, thank you for the countless blessings and challenges that draw us near you. Thank you for the challenging moments when we have given me strength to wait out the storm. Jesus, you are so good. Whatever storms come into our life, you are rock and shelter. Thank you for your presence and sustenance that fills us and the light that surrounds us and your love that never fails us. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'm just going to ask patients to read from um, Colossians 3, verse 15. Amen. Thank you. So secondly, I just want us to think about the coming 12 months from today as we continue this spiritual journey and our, uh, our plans and what we're looking at in the church. So in closing, I just want us to just um, think about prayers and guidance for over the next 12 months. And I ask just very shortly now, to just pray as you feel that. Amen. Lord, we thank you for all that you have done for us. You have carried us through some stormy times. You have always been our friend. You have never let us down. And even though we don't know what the next 12 months hold, we put our faith and our trust in you. That whatever comes our way, you are still God. You are still Almighty. You will never leave us. Whatever we face, 
Amen. Amen. So I encourage you to find your way, you know, because we're all different and we all have different styles, to maintain yourself and to maintain your spiritual growth. And I shall close in prayer. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day. We rejoice and we are glad in it. We thank you for your promises and we thank you for your love. Remind us when we falter and remind us when we fail and that you uphold us. Your mercy and purpose in your life, we cannot outrun your love and the free gift of salvation. There is so much fear and frustration in this earth. There is, gra there is grave injustice, oppression, unfairness everywhere we look. Disastrous events, wars, we fear sometimes losing our lives, our loved ones. But Lord, you are a comforter in it all. In your word, we are upheld, and in your arms, we throw our anxieties and find your safety and protection. So Lord, we give this prayer, and you ask that we that will be with us as a core family and as Catford Cast Salvation Army over the 12 months. We pray for your encouragement. We pray for your grace. Amen. Thank you, Shirai. Now, we're just going to uh, just have a very brief prayer, and then I'll just share a few words. Father God, we just come before you, and I just pray and ask that as we take some, just a few moments to consider your word and what you're saying to us today, that um, yeah, we will be responsive to you and hear the message you have. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, Doreen, this one's for you. I've already done a really short message. I've already done a really short message for this morning but I'm going to make it even shorter because I know you like it short and sweet. She can't hear a word I'm saying. It's okay. It's all right. But uh, before we do, I'm just going to read just four verses from uh, the account of Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly the sound of a blowing violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed like tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. This morning we, we celebrate um, Pentecost, but we're also conscious of our spiritual journey. And I, I want to try and tie these two things together. And to do so, there's three points that I want to make today. The first is that the Holy Spirit enters into community. The second is the Holy Spirit is experienced in community. And the third is that the Holy Spirit enables community. We just had that account, didn't we? And it said they were all together in the same place. And then it all happened. The Holy Spirit, when it comes, when Jesus decides to send it, when the Father decides to send his Spirit, is when the people are together. The Holy Spirit enters into community. Now, I'm not for a moment saying that the Holy Spirit can't come in in an individual sense. But I am saying that as a whole, the Holy Spirit comes when we are together as community. I've already shared that today we live in a me culture and not in a we culture. People live for their own goals, to fulfill their own dreams, and live by their own values, sometimes literally values that they have determined themselves. 
But this is not the culture of the kingdom of heaven. Believers who try to go it alone, and there's often many of them, land up living something less than the kingdom life that we're called to. The Holy Spirit has come for the we and not just for the me. In the same way that Jesus died for the sins of the world and not just for the sins of Michael or Rebecca or Shirai or for patience. The Holy Spirit comes within community because the purpose of the Holy Spirit is to build kingdom community. And because of that, we experience the Holy Spirit at its best within community. I come across a lot of people who uh, tell me that um, I don't have to be a Christian. Uh, sorry, I don't have to go to church to be a Christian. And uh, I'm not debating that. I'm not saying the one telltale sign of being a Christian is that you go to church. Um, there's the famous saying, isn't there, that just because you sleep in a garage, it doesn't make you a car. In the same way that just because you come to church doesn't make you a Christian. But I would also say that if you are a car, the best place for you to be is in a garage. In the same way that if you are a Christian, the best place for you to be is within a community of believers. Because just as in the garage, Shirai's already said, it must be something of God, that you receive that care, you receive that maintenance, that building up, that understanding. The same takes place within the Christian community. In these verses that, uh, we, that um, were brought to us from Hebrews, we read, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Because we are in community and part of a community, we can let go of those things. We can truly be ourselves. So often, because we live in a me culture, feel, people can feel that being part of a we culture means that they're prisoners. They can feel that their freedom is somehow restricted. However, it's actually within the church that we experience the power of the Holy Spirit and the freedom to truly be ourselves. Living for me might seem like freedom. However, it just means that your prison is a prison of your own choice. Often a prison of your own making. Living for me means that for, you're forever trying to hide your true self from other people. But learning to live in a we culture as part of a community and within part of the church, we can learn to confront those things in our lives that we try to hide. The sin, the darkness, and that we find ourselves in a safe place like Sharon was sharing as part of their conversation where you're loved and you're accepted and you're encouraged. We can throw off the things that so easily entangle us and hold us back from being who God has called us to be because we're in a place of love. And finally, because the Holy Spirit both enters into community and is best experienced in community, it means that ultimately God's Holy Spirit enables kingdom community to take place. It empowers it by empowering us as members of the kingdom community. In Acts 2, we read, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Sorry, they were all filled by the Holy Spirit and began speaking 
in tongues or in different languages as the Holy Spirit enabled them. What we see going on here is an act of the Holy Spirit to draw more people into their community. This speaking of tongues was not a speaking of tongues that we sometimes see as a gift in people's lives where they are communing on a spiritual level. This was literally being able to speak a language they'd never spoke before that a lot of people around them at that time would know. This enabled those who were in Jerusalem for the the spiritual festival of Pentecost or the, the, is it the celebration of the lights? I don't know. They were all gathered in Jerusalem because... That's the first fruits harvest, that's it. They were all gathered together in this place. People from different languages. So the people who didn't speak Aramaic were able to understand the gospel and come and be part. The Holy Spirit comes to enable the kingdom to grow, to become bigger. This enabling might come today in the form of somebody having the gift of hospitality and making people feel welcome here. Or it might come as um, the Holy Spirit giving somebody the gift of stewardship, meaning that the church has the resources and are able to sustain them. But ultimately, God's Holy Spirit comes to enable us to grow his kingdom and, in short, to grow community. I close then by challenging you today not to reflect upon what difference having the Holy Spirit at work in you afresh today will impact you, but what difference the Holy Spirit at work in your life today will impact us. How will it transform Catford Salvation Army? How will it enable God's community in this place? How we decide to live, sorry, if we decide to live not within the culture of me, but start to live within a culture of me, starting to live in the kingdom culture. It allows us to be the tool of the Holy Spirit and not merely the object of the Spirit's blessing. That's something for us to think about today. We're going to uh, come together. I'm going to, can I just, were there a lot of important announcements? Okay, can I have the announcements? I'll do them very quickly. Sorry, I'm just very conscious that uh, time's running away. And I meant to end at quarter past 11, and we're now at quarter to 12. So uh, things are going on. So please don't run off. We're going to complete the NCD surveys today. They're at the back. If you need help, some of us will be around to help you. Um, To make you aware, if you're not on the chat, uh, we do have a new general or a new general elect. Do they have to be officially sworn in, Hydrin? No, because both the other generals are there. Okay. That's right. So we have two generals. So we have a general in spare that's waiting to become the, the general fully. Yes. And, uh, but his, his name is Commissioner Lyndon Buckingham. And he is from New Zealand. And he takes on the role alongside uh, his wife, Commissioner Bronwyn Buckingham. And uh, so we give thanks for that. We want to thank everybody who's been praying for for over the 10 days. Have you found it an enriching time? I hope so. Taking that time apart to pray for thy kingdom come. Just to make you aware, the big clean is also coming up. And that is going to take place on Saturday the 17th of June. Yes. Uh, between 11 and 2 o'clock. Okay, and um, Shirai's going to have some leaflets. I don't know, are you doing a sign-up sheet? Yeah. Yeah, and and he'll have a sign-up sheet so that you can indicate that you're coming. Um, Please continue to pray for those who are unwell. And what's the last one, Shirai? 
It's Sharon's birthday. We can't forget that. Sharon's birthday. So shall we sing happy birthday? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sharon. Happy birthday to you. Hip, hip. Hip, hip. Excellent. Now let's sing our final song together. 327 in the songbook. Uh, sorry, no, 326 in the songbook, because you corrected me before. Thou Christ, a burning, cleansing flame, send the fire. Thy blood-bought gift today we claim. Send the fire. Look down and see this waiting host. Give us the promise, Holy Ghost. We want to see another Pentecost. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we want to see another Pentecost. Yes. Send the fire today. Let's stand up and sing. Oh, have I got that wrong? Sorry. What is the tune we normally use for that? Send is it send the fire? Okay, go to 294 then. Sorry, I thought that was the traditional tune. Thou Christ of burning cleansing. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Thou Christ of burning cleansing flame, send the fire. Thy blood brought gift today we claim. Send the us. May his spirit indwell us and empower us to bring his kingdom come here on earth, we pray. Amen.